Okay, it's time for my next update. It's actually about a month late. Sorry about that. Um, so I want to apologize ahead of time. It is reasonably hot right now and humid. So if I end up being kind of incoherent, it's because my brain is not operating at full efficiency right now. Uh, plus I have all the windows closed and my fan turned off to avoid noise in this video. So that's gonna make me, it's making things bake even a little bit more right now. Anyway, uh, so let's jump right into it. So first I wanna talk about a couple of things that I've been doing. So since the last video, I've picked up my active immersion again. And my two primary tools for that have been uh, are tools that are actually written by the same guy. Uh, the first one is a video player called Voracious. Voracious. <sighs> Voracious. <laughs> and it's a video player that is specifically designed for language learning. And it, it basically uh, lets you have a library of videos and the subtitle video or the subtitle files that go with those videos. And you can have multiple subtitle tracks for each video. So you could have Japanese and English, and Portuguese if you wanted to. <laughs> and when you're watching the video, you can toggle on and off multiple subtitle tracks. So I can have the Japanese subtitle track visible or the Japanese and the English or just the English or whatever. And this has been really, really nice from a uh, just being able to both watch the show without subtitles or and then be like, oh, wait, I heard something, bring up the Japanese subtitles, see if I understand it. If I understand, you know, pretty much all the words in it, but I still can't quite get a sense of what the intent behind the sentence is, then I can turn on the English subtitles, kind of see how the translators decided to translate it. Uh, sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not, but when it is helpful, it's like, oh, okay, see, when you put these things together, it kind of has that sort of feel to it, okay. And then on top of that, you can hover over the Japanese subtitles and uh, it will show you the definitions for words. And so the combination of all these things makes it really nice for uh, immersing. Oh, and then the other thing is you can actually skip forward and backward in the video or replay sections of the video based on the Japanese subtitles which is great because it means that I can uh, re-listen to a line uh, very easily without having to be like, oh, skip back three seconds, oh, that was too much, like, oh, and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, nope, goes right to the beginning of the subtitle, replace it, oh, right to the beginning of the subtitle, replace it. So that's been really nice, uh, it's, and it's made it, uh, I think, both more efficient and more fun or pleasurable, I don't know, uh, nicer <laughs> to do my active immersion. So that's been really great, and I use that for a lot of my active immersion. Uh, but the other tool is a an add-on for that I believe it exists for both Firefox and Chrome that uh, will take Netflix subtitles and let you uh, toggle them on and off with with a hotkey, and then also actually make them selectable. So you can like select uh, and copy and paste into a dictionary or something and uh, find out uh, what that word meant. Uh, so it's not nearly as efficient as watching things through Voracious, but it does mean that I can watch things on Netflix and uh, still, without like a huge amount of hassle, look things up. Uh, so that makes that a little bit more efficient and a little bit nicer. Uh, yeah, so I will put a link in the description to uh, both of those. Really super recommend them. It's been really nice. So the other thing I want to talk about as far as what I've been doing is that a couple of updates ago I talked about wanting to focus on just one or two shows for my active immersion and I have been doing that. I've in fact been focusing on one show and when I say focusing on one show for my active immersion I don't mean only doing that show for my active immersion but I mean repeatedly coming back to that show on a regular basis as part of my active immersion. So I'd say I'm probably spending roughly a third of my active immersion time on that show, which feels pretty good to me because it gives me a chance to re-watch that stuff. Uh, but it also doesn't keep me from kind of enjoying some more variety, right? So I don't get sick of just watching that one show and it gives me a chance to kind of branch out and enjoy my, myself a little bit more with other shows. So I think that's been going really, really well and I super recommend it. Uh, the, the two things that are nicest about it that I want to explain, I guess, uh, or, or tell you about 
The first is that I've also been focusing my passive immersion on that show to an even higher extent. So active immersion time is probably only about a third for that show, but my passive immersion is pretty close to 100%, 100% on just that show. And what's been nice about that is the combination of having kind of a show that I'm focusing on in my active immersion, which also is almost all of my passive immersion, is that the passive immersion I get to like kind of progress on, on that, uh, how do I put it? It's like progress on that one show, right? So as I'm listening to it, I'm, I keep on understanding more and more and more of that show. And then my active immersion, I'm understanding more and more of that show. Uh, and that's just been really nice. And so then the second thing I guess kind of stem, stems from that is that having sort of one workhorse show that I'm, that I'm focusing on uh, to, to some extent also gives me a sense of progress. Because the thing is that uh, languages are huge, right? Like in English is, is large. There's tons of words, tons of like potential like constructs and, and phrases and things that you could learn. Uh, and Japanese is the same way. There's tons of words. And so if you're constantly switching between like different shows, uh, p particularly if they're in different genres, uh, but I think even just different shows, because they have different writers, have different kind of vocabulary they tend to use, I guess. Um, it's really easy to kind of feel like you're not making progress, or at least not making as much progress as you actually are, because you constantly feel like you're not understanding very much uh, with all of those shows, because they just happen to use different different language. Um, so having one show to focus on and having that kind of uh, continual improvement where like within that one show you keep on understanding more and more and more and more and more of it really helps uh, to, to keep me motivated, I think, uh, because otherwise I think I pretty much would feel like I'm not making any progress. Uh, yeah, so uh, those are kind of the things that I've been focusing on doing. So about my progress, uh, I definitely am making progress, as I can definitely tell from that one show in particular. Um, but what's interesting is that, like, yeah, outside of that show, uh, it often doesn't feel like I'm making that much progress. Uh, but I, I think I actually still am. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this in, in a couple of different ways. So one is uh, kind of other shows that I'm watching, and then the other is uh, kind of my experience communicating with people here in Japan. So uh, with other shows, uh, like I, I guess is almost rehashing what I just said, but with other shows, uh, because I keep on switching between shows, I'm not rewatching the other shows a whole lot. Uh, it they keep on, I keep on getting introduced to like new vocabulary, right? Which is great, but at the same time, that also kind of continually gives me this experience of like, oh, I'm not, I'm not making progress. I can't, I can't understand what they're saying in this show. What's going on? Uh, and so that's, uh, I guess it's not actually, it's not too frustrating, but it would be, I think, if I didn't have this other gauge. So the other thing is, yeah, communicating with people in Japan and that again, it doesn't feel like I'm making progress. My, my continual experience in Japan is basically, I don't understand what anyone is saying. Uh, I mean, that's not entirely true. I do understand some of what people are saying, but the, like even making what is actually quite a bit of progress really only bumps you up like a couple percentage points in terms of your comprehension. At least that's kind of been my experience. Um, so my so if I go from like ten percent comprehension to like twelve percent to fourteen percent to fifteen percent, even going from like ten to twenty percent, like doesn't feel very different, right? Because I'm still because still the large majority of what I hear I don't understand, right? But what's interesting is that if I think back to when I first arrived in this city in particular, uh, and the the struggles that I had communicating with other people, uh, the struggles have definitely gotten like they've definitely they've definitely lessened uh and i have a much easier time communicating with people now than i did when i first got here uh but it just it doesn't always feel that way uh if that makes sense so it's, it's kind of a, it's an interesting thing um yeah yeah language language learning or language acquisition progress i really actually like i'm increasingly convinced it's just it's a difficult thing to gauge um, but I am making progress, and it is satisfying, and I, you know, when I think about it, and I think, 
like actually compared to like how much I was struggling before to how much I struggle now, it's actually really satisfying uh, to realize that I am struggling less uh, and understanding what other people are saying. Uh, and also struggling less to express what I want to express. Um, now I want, I do want to kind of put a disclaimer there that like my Japanese is super broken. Uh, like most of the Japanese that I use, I don't know if it's correct or not. And I am just kind of falling into habits based on whether I successfully communicate with people or not. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with forming those bad habits. Uh, because I can, I mean, I'll fix them later, maybe with some difficulty, but I'm okay with that. Um, I can go back and fix those later. And I'm very aware that my Japanese is broken. Uh, so I'm not, like my assumption basically is that my Japanese is always broken, except for some very simple things that I'm super confident are correct. Um, but nevertheless, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting kind of uh, having like, these things increasing. Um, the other thing is that other people have also commented to me that my Japanese has gotten much better. And part of that may be based on my output rather than on my uh, comprehension. Uh, so I'm not putting too much uh, seriousness or taking that too seriously. The other thing is people here also like to be really nice to you. Uh, and although I don't think they would go out, out of their way to lie to me, uh, they might be exaggerating in how much progress I've made, right? Um, but... Uh, but nevertheless, it's uh, yeah. So I do think I'm making some progress. One of uh, one of the things I did want to talk about uh, is kind of a plug for another uh, channel. <laughs> My channel is so tame that's almost ridiculous. But I'm going to plug this guy like it's going to help him because uh, he's way bigger than me, and you probably already know who he is. Uh, but anyway, I want to mention him, uh, Dogen. If you don't know, I'll put a link in the description below as well. Uh, Dogen's channel is great. Uh, it's it's really fun, um, but the thing that I actually love him for the most is his Japanese pronunciation series, and I super suggest that you check that out. It's behind a paywall. You have to uh, subscribe to his Patreon for a certain amount of things, like $10 a month to access it, um, but it is super worth it. And one of the, one of the compliments that I've gotten uh, quite a few times now in Japan is that my pronunciation is is good like people are like oh wow like your your Japanese pronunciation is actually pretty good uh, I mean they actually say like oh it's amazing your Japanese pronunciation is so good sway <laughs> uh, but uh, that was not an example of my Japanese pronunciation by the way um, but uh, but the reality of course is my, my I still super have an accent right and I definitely know that I have an accent um, but my Japanese pronunciation is good enough that people notice it and comment about it, which is very different from people just being like, oh, your Japanese is really good. Oh, jōzu, jōzu. Um, they're, uh, it's, it's, yeah. I'm trying to think how to put it. Uh, oh, my brain is getting fried by this heat. I just, like, it just locked up. I can't think now. Uh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> my Japanese pronunciation, uh, like, I think it's, mediocre, right? That's that's the reality, is that my Japanese pronunci pronunciation is mediocre, uh, but it is definitely way better that, than it would be uh, if it weren't for Dogen's series. So Dogen's series actually uh, made me start paying attention to pitch accents, uh, which has, uh, and gave me like some rules of thumb that have been super, super useful. Uh, but the biggest thing was just kind of like being like, yeah, pay attention to it. And like, this, these are kind of like the patterns that it can follow. So just like listen for those. Uh, and that's been super, super useful. Um, it's helped me correct uh, pitch accent pronunciation that I had wrong on a bunch of words that I learned uh, before uh, I started doing the AJAP MIA style of, uh, of Japanese learning. Um, and then a whole bunch of other things, just like how you even f like form various consonants and vowel sounds in Japanese. Um, I, I think my vowels were already pretty decent to begin with, um, but there's certain things like the way that the, the SH sound is pronounced, or the way that the, uh, what's it called? It's not, it's the, the hiragana character that, that they teach you completely incorrectly, by the way, is the N sound. Uh, it's not the N sound. Um, it's its pronunciation uh, varies depending on context. Uh, and in fact, most of the time it is not the N sound. 
uh, including when it comes at the end of a word. It is not the end sound. There's a different sound that you make kind of in the back of your in the back of your mouth, back of your throat. Um, anyway, but like learning all of that stuff, I think has kind of collectively made my Japanese pronunciation, I guess, acceptable. Uh, which I guess is surprising uh, to a lot of Japanese people, so they they call it out, and they're like, "Oh wow, your Japanese pronunciation is is, is really good," which actually means like, "Oh, passable." <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's been cool. So yeah, shout out to Dogen. Definitely check out his channel. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is uh, reading. So I've done like almost no reading uh, for most of my studying, and I'm thinking about changing that. I'm not sure if I want to yet, uh, because I do really like focusing on the listening uh, aspect of things, because even focusing on listening, my reading ability is still better. Uh, and so I feel like if I throw reading into the mix, then my reading abil ability will just like shoot through the roof compared to my listening ability. Um, but increasingly, I'm I'm kind of realizing that doesn't actually matter, and I don't really care. Um, so I think I might start doing some reading, because the thing is that reading can also feed back into your listening comprehension, right? Because when you learn things reading, you don't necessarily know how things are, are quite pronounced correctly, and, uh, you know, the written Japanese is not, uh, is frequently not quite the same as spoken Japanese, but nevertheless, it gives you exposure to things you can uh, then maybe, like, notice uh, in your immersion. Uh, and I'm wondering if that might actually help me progress faster. Uh, so that's something I might start doing is, is throwing some, some reading into the mix, but I'm not sure yet. So I guess you'll find out if I did that or not in my next video. So I think that's about it. Uh, so to, to summarize, uh, Voracious Video Player, definitely check it out. The corresponding Netflix plugin by the, the same, or browser add-on uh, by the same guy, definitely pr check that out. I have been making progress. But it doesn't always feel like you're making progress, even when you are. Uh, check out Dogen's series for uh, his pronunciation, his Japanese pronunciation series, which is excellent. Uh, and yeah, I think that's. Uh... Oh, and uh, focusing on like one show is kind of your workhorse show. Definitely, definitely recommend. Cool. Well, I will see you next time.